in the next video. All right, in this video, we're looking at the difference um, between two means where our samples are independent. Uh, so we'll clarify what that means, and then we'll talk about confidence interval hypothesis testing and confidence intervals as well. So with independent samples, they're not paired at all. They're just two different random groups. Um, and now what we're going to be looking at is the difference in the means. Not the mean difference, because we don't have them. They might not all be paired. Um, in fact, they're not supposed to be paired at all. They're supposed to be two independent samples. So we need the distribution of that. And this gets a little clunky. I'm sorry for all of the text on the page here. You'll, you'll notice the T. That looks similar. Um, then there's an X bar minus a mean over a standard deviation type thing. Uh, it's a little more complicated than that in the denominator. Um, I really wish we could go more in depth here. Um, one, you don't want a 40 minute video. And two, for our purposes, it's OK to understand kind of how the test works and know what menu it is in StatCrunch or a statistical software and just know how to interpret it. Um, I don't feel great about that, but that's the trade-off we're going to make. The degrees of freedom here, um, and StatCrunch will calculate this automatically, but it uses, you kind of want to be as liberal as possible. So you want the smallest degrees of freedom, which makes that T wider. So what you do is you look at the smaller sample size and use that. Um, use that to calculate your, your uh, degrees of freedom. And then you'll notice here in the box that this assumes the two populations are normally distributed, though it is a pretty robust procedure, meaning it can handle a little bit of deviation from that. So if you do that QQ plot and it's not perfectly linear, that normal quantile plot, uh, that's OK. Uh, if there's an outlier that's not crazy, that's, it's, it's an outlier, but it, you know, it, one outlier out of a sample of 50 or something isn't going to blow this up. And you can still kind of follow this test because this is approximately following the T distribution. So there is some wiggle room here. Um, in terms of st statistical inference, we have the usual hypothesis test. Typically, it's that the difference in the means is 0. And then you can have a left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed test, and then a confidence interval here as well. Kind of normal layout. You kind of get the idea. There's some new stuff here. Uh, but you can kind of see some familiar things there. So let's suppose that we're looking at students coming to ECC and we're wondering, um, do the districts that they come from all have the same average ACT score? So I have two different districts here, and this is actual sample data. Um, from District A, they had a mean score of 22.9, uh, and from District B, uh, mean score of 23.9 with those standard deviations. So clearly the sample means are different, but is it significant enough for us to say that it's statistically different, that all students coming from those schools, this was just a random sample? So we're going to do a hypothesis test. So let's set this up here. You know this the typical null and alternative hypothesis here. So now we're going to assume that the means are different or that the difference in the means is, or we're going to assume <laughs> We're going to assume that the uh, the means are equal, and or that the difference is zero, and then our alternative is we're just looking here. Is there anything for us to say that they're different? So we're just going to say not equal to, and then we've got the five percent level of significance test statistic p value. So let's go ahead and uh, where did it go? There it is. All right. So we are going to do. T stat now to sample with summary. We don't have the raw data here. So sample mean 22.9, 2.4 sample standard deviation. We had 146 students. Sample mean 23.9, standard deviation 2.6, sample size 134. We'll talk a little bit about this pool variance as we want to uncheck that. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about what that means. Yeah, and it was a not equal to, right? So compute, ooh, pretty small p-value there. So we had a pretty small p-value. Whoops, sorry. Ah. And let's see here. Right, so when we do our hypothesis test, we would reject the null hypothesis and our conclusion that there is enough evidence to say that the mean ACT score for the students in the two districts is different. All right, for the confidence interval, let's do some different data. Uh, suppose we wonder if there's a difference between the performances of men and women 
in mathematics. And what we might do is we might look at uh, some sample data and just look at test scores. Um, be careful here, we're not wondering if, if men or women are better at math. We're just looking at this particular sample data and saying, well, do their test scores reflect anything? So, because what we might be interested in is um, not whether there is genetic difference, but what are some, you know, like if there, if there is a performance difference, what is the reason for that? How can we remediate that? So as an institution, that might be something that we look at. If there's no difference, we say, okay, so these aren't, this particular factor is not going to be something we're going to consider. And we're going to look at maybe other factors and focus because we're trying to improve student success. So if an individual's um, sex determines or has an effect on how they do, then we might look at that and maybe there are some other um, factors playing in there. So uh, in this case, we're going to find a confidence interval for the difference of the means, the difference between the average for women and the average for men. So let's go back. All right, so let's see here. Stat, T stats, two sample with data. I have data now. And we've got women first and then men second. Again, we're going to uncheck pool of variances, but now I'm doing a confidence interval and I wanted 98. So if we compute that, uh oh, you know what? I think in my video or in my PowerPoint, ooh, I did 95. Oh, sorry about that. I don't have time to go and fix that one. So we're just going to pretend this was 95. Okay, so uh, we are 95% confident that the difference in the mean score is between negative 3.9 and 12.1. So based on that, um, our mean difference was actually positive. So women were doing better on average. The average score for women was better than the average score for men. But the confidence interval here includes zero. So we really can't say that there's any difference at all there. That, that just could be random from that particular sample. So let's talk a little bit about pooled t-tests and what this means. So we had this particular distribution. We said that approximately follows the t-distribution. And it doesn't assume the population variances are equal. There was no mention about that. It just said this comes from one population with this standard deviation, and this one comes from another population with the other standard deviation. So if we assume the population variances are equal, we can pool the sample variances and get this crazy statistic. And this exactly follows the t-distribution. So we have this difference of this, the one that we did approximately follows the t-distribution. This other one exactly follows the t-distribution. So the question is, why not pool them? Well, first of all, you'd have to prove that the variances were equal. So you'd have to test that first. And we're going to talk about that in the next section. That test is very strict. So the two populations must be normally distributed. And it's not robust. Any departures from normality, you can't do that test. So most statisticians just recommend avoiding the test of equal variances. It's called or homogeneity of, of variances. You know, homogeneous means the same. So, so most statisticians just recommend, you know what, just compare the means, assuming the variances are unequal. Don't do that pooled. So it's interesting that it's by default checked in the box there. Um, but technically, you would have to check whether the variances were equal first. And if your populations aren't perfectly normally distributed, then you're out of luck, even if you have a sample size of 100, um, which the other one we could do. We just have to have a sample size of at least 30 from each population. So, so that's the reason why we don't pool those t-tests as a default. You can, but you have to test the variances first. All right, so that's it from comparing two um, population means from independent 